Welcome back to Sherlock Holmes vs. Arsene Lupin. We are disguised as a ragamuffin, I guess that's what you could say. So now we're off to go to the Golden Lion to see if we can get information out of the lovely, I do quotes for that, lovely people at the Golden Lion. But no one first, in the street. Even better. Watson thought my disguise was successful, but I'll have to ensure it works on a tougher audience before I enter the Golden Lion. And that tougher audience, you ask? What about this policeman who's right here? There, there. Sergeant Ruffles. He'll be an excellent subject. Alrighty. Hello, me old China. Hey, over here, you. When someone with a face like yours says hello to an officer, there's something happening, isn't there? Ain't hey, now going on, copper. I don't recognise you. You aren't from hereabouts, are you? You're from Bloomsbury, by chance. I ain't. Oh, I think you are. I'd even say that you had a hand in the robbery at Sir Herman Grimble's house last night. We've been informed that the leader of the gang had taken refuge in the area. And now you're passing by to recover your share of the take, right? Thanks, so, copper. Last night wasn't me aunt feeling a little dicky. I had to fetch 20 pounds of coal in the wee hours of the night, all on account of her feet being cold. And the coalman didn't have a bag. Enough already. You'll have to watch over your shoulder, because I've got my eye on you. Succeeded with flying colours. Now that that's over, let us go. I get we can go play with Barnes. I want to see if that'll actually work. I want to go see if we can go play with Barnes. I have, I no, have no reason to go there. Oh come on! I want to go have fun with Barnes. Nah, it's, you're no fun, Holmes. Work, work, work. No play. Oh well, it was worth a shot. So now back to business. It would be funny though if they let me go have fun at Barnes. All right, let's talk to. Hello, people. Gov. Have you seen a bloke from the paper? Piers, his name is. This ain't lost and found. Have a drink or get lost. Got it? Yeah, sure. Hello, Gov. Have you seen a bloke from the paper? Piers, his name is. Shh. Shh. I'm a secret war with ears. Shh. Yeah, what lovely people here. Well. Hello, Gov. Have you seen a bloke from the paper? Piers, his name is. Hey, big fella. One of your friends? Hey, you know, he told me if I had the skinny, he'd be sure to line my pocket. It just so happens I've got something he'd kill to know. Tell me about it. A gent, your pal, I think he's dosed up with some chap at the Mrs. Fleming's on Milcom Street. A door with flowers on both sides. He must have a room on the first floor. Hey, when he greases your hand, come pay me a visit. We'll have a few pints, and after that... <laughs> Ta, lassie. I'll think about it. I'll tell you right now. The answer is no! No! Ha-ha! <laughs> oh, that is a great big... Well, you can probably tell where it has to go. It's where that hand is now that she wasn't before. That's the way to go to Pierre's apartment. We can call it that. There's a chance that Lupin and his accomplices are still there. I will need to know with absolute certitude behind which door their hideout is in order to steer the events to my advantage. Alright, so let's see here. Let's just uh, look right here. Elongated shape, slender footprint. It's that of a girl, a young girl. Elongated shape, slender... Okay, 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 okay. Measurement. Hard. Size 5, small feet. Alright, so I think it's not this one. But we're gonna try anyway. Ah, I'm mistaken. I lose all element of surprise if the alarm is given too late. Whoop, let me do that. Alright, so he ran away. Yes, come on, come on, come on. I just want to see if, like, there'd be a funny scene, but no, it's all, all serious. Alright, what about here? Hmm, these are work boots. These footprints are size nine and a half. Not 
Lupin. So let's try now over here. What about these? Work boots. Look, some blood and little scraps of meat. The man must work in a slaughterhouse. It's obviously not him, but let's just try for fun. Size eight. Eight. Well, I guess there's only one room left. We walk closer, thank you. The footprints are indistinct, but they don't seem to be those of work boots. Oops, hang on. Measure. Measure! These footprints are size 9. Alright. I believe this is his door. Who are that opens you? Hey, don't it. be daft. I'm just here visiting the bloke I know. Hack writer. Know him, don't you? I don't know nothing. You've got a real trap on you. I'd say you're a real think. I ain't no think, me. Did he tell you where he was going? See, it's just that he promised me loot he did. Here it is. I was laying low here tonight. Did a big number already, you hear? The barkeeper over the lion told me this joint was emptied an hour ago and paid up for the next three days. And here I am, but I ain't never laid eyes on you, chap. Could be that he left a little something for me in his snug. I'll just take a peek, will I? Fat chance. But if you want to earn a few cents, go tell Eddie, the barkeeper over the lion, there's twice as much as I'd thought. Tell him that little Sam is no longer in the race and he should talk to that chump from Chelsea. So buzz off and hold your tongue, or I'll have it taken out by it. I recognised him. It's Rumkin, a famous burglar. I need to find a way to get him out in order to search the room without alerting the police. Their intervention would cause a commotion and any clues would be destroyed. I must think. Alrighty, so... Uh, let's see here. Well, we're gonna run back somewhere. Head back to the Golden Lion. Or... Not the Golden Lion. Really, rather uh, unsafe. I suppose I could have jumped, but I decided to walk. I need to add time. Thank you for continuing to run. Turn the camera a bit. There we go. Let's see here. Oh, bar dude. You, Eddie, to you, that's mister. Alright, fine, whatever. I've just been to see the Mrs. Fleming's tenant. Know him? Rumpkin? Shh, keep it down. What's the deal? Ain't no coppers round here. Oh, there's plenty. Big Bruiser, my guard, is part of Luigi's gang, and they're after Rumpkin's hide. If they found out that I've been harboring and dealing with him, my goose is cooked. And yours, too. Our ours. Let's just go on with it. Huh? Maybe I'll just let Luigi know where to find Rumpkin. He might cough up a few bob for that tidbit. How's that sound? Listen, you dirty rat. Luigi and Rumpkin had a, let's say, a difference of opinion. A little matter of honour. And now Rumpkin ain't welcome round here. So Rumpkin comes to me on the sly. He just scored big, he says. He's going to cut me a share of the all if I bail him out. It's a risk, mind. Now, if you can hold your tongue, you'll get your share too. Deal. Alright. Rumpkin ain't ready to leave his hideout, eh? <laughs> Not likely. The very idea of finding himself face to face with a striped scarf has him quaking in his boots. I can imagine. Striped scarf, eh? What's the score with that then? The identifying sign for Luigi's gang. All those blokes have a striped scarf. They got weird designs on them too. That and their long knives is their trademark. Helps us to see them coming and stay out of the way. Good to avoid the asshole. So, what was it that Rumkin wanted to tell me? Said it's more than ten times what you thought. Supposed to bring little Sam, the chump from Chelsea, eh? And as many other men you lord over. Bring them all at midnight. Really? That's top hole, that. I'm on it. Alright, so there he goes. I'm gonna take this knife, because we can. This may prove to be useful. Indeed. Can I go in here? I have no reason to go there. Oh, come on. I want to go play turtle turtle races and see the guy sway side to side again. I've been there all night. I 
been there all day. And boy, got me going side to side. That song's probably been out of the loop for a long time by the time you're watching this. Alrighty. Now then, we take the knife, and we're gonna- no, I'm kidding. Ahaha! <laughs> we're like, you let me in or I murder you. Wow, that almost went the wrong way. No, I must figure out a way for him to leave. Oh, come on. I guess I jumped the gun. Aw, oh, dang, I missed something at the bar. Here we go, I think. This cloth, the size of a scarf, may come in handy. And, uh... Yeah, it's Phew, fun. His scarf is soaked in wine. If I take it, I risk waking him. I must make sure this drunkard doesn't notice. Alright, so do we need to cut it? Let's try cutting it. Phew, his scarf. Scarf, his scarf, his scarf. Rotate the camera so I can see. Scram, you drunkard! Wow, you're so nice. Aha, there it is. This may prove to be useful. What most closely resembles a cloth soaked in wine? Another cloth soaked in wine. Ha 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 ha. Very smart. Scram! I don't want to talk to you. I'll scram once you give me the scarf. Perfect. He didn't notice anything. Neither did I, because the animation was like really lazy. Back over here, I listen to the violin play its song running. You have five seconds to put that thing down. If I'm telling you that, it's because there's a way for you and me both to get along without getting hurt and without Luigi finding out. One, two. Okay, spill the beans. Good. Grab a bag and scarper as fast as you can. I keep the rest, and you'll want to pass by Baker Street because the rest of the crew is waiting on the other side. Fine, but we'll meet again. You can count on it. In exactly 13 seconds, he'll come across Sergeant Rufles. Right, what can I find here? Well, that was definitely clever. Not only is he out of our way, but he is going to be arrested. And that's a thing. Well, Rumpkin must have lost this paper in leaving. Oh, I should probably put that away. There we go. Now, let's look around. We got wine. Anything it's definitely the loot from the recent burglary of Herman Grimbles. I haven't seen him since the adventure of the Silver Earring. He'd be pleased to see me again, especially if I return his stolen property. Y'all remember Grimble, don't ya? It's definitely the loot nope, from the... I was, to, I was trying to open it, but uh... What's this? Certain scraps of wood seem to have been painted with silver paint. It's a strong wood, no dust on it. Let's head to Baker Street. Alright, uh, time... Wow, time has passed quickly. Okay, so uh, we're gonna walk. Maybe we can get more time installed a little bit. Because uh, very soon we'll probably have a long cutscene and then get to the next area. If I can, that'd be a good place to stop. So I need to somehow fill 15 minutes. So hopefully walk the walkings and then the cutscene and then talking to Watson probably will fill that. Yeah, that should be a long nest. That should uh, take a little bit of time to cover. Also means we are actually beginning to make progress towards the end of the game. How about that? This is what, episode 11? So maybe we'll do it under 
20th. That'd be a cool accomplishment to see if we can finish this game in under 20 episodes. I doubt it, but uh, I'm going to see if we can possibly... Do I always say that to Watson, hopefully it's here. Yep. At last, Holmes. I was imagining the worst had happened to you. It was nothing, Watson. Even though I didn't manage to catch the swordfish, I do happen to have a few sea bream in my bag. I sent off the letters that you wanted me to pen. I am in a right state. Do you really believe that this rascal would dare attack? I do believe, Watson. We'll discuss this later. I have a small task to do which requires my absolute concentration. I'll have to ask you to leave and go to Scotland Yard in order to inform the authorities that the plunder from the robbery at Sir Grimble's residence can be found in one of the rooms rented by Mrs. Fleming. Second door on the left, to be exact. They already have the perpetrator, but if the inspectors would be so good as to wait until midnight, they will find in that very location the top fences in London. Hand in the cookie jar, or jars, I should say. If you say so, Holmes. Thank you, Watson. As for myself, I need to study the clues that I recently found. There goes Watson. What secrets are these bits of silverwood hiding? Ah, uh, we haven't had to do one of these in a while. Actually, this is the first one of the I game. I need something. You need something, yeah, you need these. These, this happened a lot. What secrets these. are these bits of silverwood hiding? We had to do this a lot in the uh, uh, last game I played, Chuck Holmes. Secret silver earring. But to this puzzle... This puzzle. Oh, this puzzle. Yeah. He's, it looks... Can I rotate? Please say no. Good, I can't rotate. I forgot this puzzle, and... Uh, I wish I had it, because this one is... Uh, they rather, it's simple, but at the same time, a f not, oh my gosh. This game and its uh, small amounts of language are making me want to use large amounts of language. Which in turn, bad. So uh, I need to remember how to assemble this, so uh, let's just see. Can I just place you over here, or do I have to be connected? It looks like to be connected to a continue over there. Let's see here. Yes, there should be you, and that means... If that's that way, then that means that us... Uh, I think it's a keep I think there's a short piece of wood right there, like, uh... No. No! It seems too short. I'm gonna try you. That might work. Yeah, this... this is gonna take a while, so I might have to cut a bit. Good. 
very good. Well done, my friend. I hope. Only one way to find out. Uses all the pieces correctly. A cage with the wood painted this color. It almost looks like a steel cage. It doesn't mean much to me. I'm back from the station where I completed the charge you had entrusted me with. On my return, a messenger gave me this letter, which asks us to meet with the Prime Minister at Buckingham Palace tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. It's far enough away, but not too late. Either way, it will give us some time for me to ponder and for you to rest. You seem sad, Watson, and we need to inspire confidence tomorrow. Our audience will be one of the hardest. Aren't they always? Mr. Holmes, the Prime Minister is in the White Room on your right, at the end of the hall. His orders were that you should be shown in immediately. Well, please, show us in immediately. Mr. Holmes, the Prime... Next, we have to go ourselves. Is it this room? I hope so. Ah, what good fortune! Here are Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson. Enter, gentlemen. If the Prime Minister will permit, will the gentleman be joining you for breakfast? No, thank you. We have already eaten and we are pressed for time. Upon reading your letter, gentlemen, I understood that the request for an audience with Her Majesty had something to do with the burglar on the loose in London. I reacted immediately even though I am unaware what the target of the next theft is. I also did all within my power to optimize the security surrounding Her Majesty. That is to say, absolutely nothing. What? Indeed, my power is non-existent once the threshold of these walls is crossed. And I've run up against an insurmountable obstacle regarding how to set up the security system surrounding Her Majesty. Her Majesty herself. Have you at least explained to her? She didn't even deign to receive me. Her Majesty is in a miserable mood for some reason or another and is refusing an audience to anyone. Despite everything, I'm staying here if it proves that she changes her mind and rules the affairs of the country from this room. All of my councillors are at the four corners of London to represent me. I even have one in the Chamber of Lords to see if Parliament can oblige Her Majesty to receive me. This could take days and we don't have days. It's the best that I can do. So, Holmes, what can this Frenchman be after? I'm not certain, but I believe that it has to do with Her Majesty herself. He will likely approach her, perhaps even be within earshot. That is out of the question. We cannot take that risk. Of course, we must prevent him. Tell me, what is the odor emanating from the stain at the bottom of your trousers? Oh, that. It's Robilar, Her Majesty's companion's dog. Leomunda is adorable. But her dog is devilish. I arrived early this morning and dozed off on the divan. This abject creature woke me up in his own way. Watch out for this little demon. He has access to the whole palace and hates everyone. I've sent for another pair of trousers, but I have the impression that they'll never arrive. Is there anything that we can do, Prime Minister? You most certainly can. <laughs> Find me some trousers without further delay and convey the letters. The addresses where they were dropped off are marked on the envelopes. A coach can be found in front of the palace. It's at your disposition. Very well. My dear Watson, you've become a public official of the nation. I won't join you despite the prestige as there may yet be a way to dispel Her Majesty's bad mood and gaining some precious time in doing so. Good luck, Holmes. I will return to my work and await the blessed moment. Tell me, Watson, what are you waiting for? A royal escort? Uh, he was waiting for the cuts in the end. Pardon me, Prime Minister. Could I trouble you to borrow your glasses? Beg pardon? My glasses? Are you nearsighted also? 
Now I understand the magnifying glass. Take them, I'll take a break. But don't break them, understood? Oh, I'm sure I'll break them, probably. I don't know, I'll remember, I'll remember this part of the game. Actually, I remember it fairly well, but, uh, just, uh, I don't remember if we actually break the glasses. I like the way the camera moves in this segment for some reason. It's kind of fun to watch. Like, ooh, fastness. Ooh, fast. Out we go. Outward and onward to do stuff. Let's take a look in here. Excuse me. Sean C, sir. At your service. Hello, John C. Here, I understand that Her Majesty is cantankerous today. Would you happen to know why? I'm sorry, but I am not authorized to comment on Her Majesty's moods. In fact, no one is. All right. Be advised, it isn't idle curiosity that compels me to ask this question. The reason that I, Sherlock Holmes, the great English detective, is here as well as the Prime Minister, is because Her Majesty is in grave danger. The danger is imminent, instigated by a man of Machiavellian twisted tendencies, who is deprived of all sense of morals and scruples. Furthermore, he is French. French? Indeed, and all men who will have worked to protect Her Majesty in the face of this peril from across the channel shall be seen as true patriots, a soldier in the image of the various English warriors who, weapons in hand, struck down the opponent. Go, my friends, join our forces and march alongside. Now speak. The facts are that Her Majesty quarreled with her companion and confidant, Lady Leomunda. The dispute concerned a gift that Her Majesty gave to Leomunda. Well, tell me about this gift. What was the gift that Her Majesty gave to her companion? A doll's house. Lady Leomunda's personal chef and servant girl were terminated immediately. But the affair wasn't settled for Her Majesty, and the two have not yet reconciled. I don't know anything further. Perhaps I could speak to Lady Leomunda? She too is refusing to receive visitors. It wasn't that inconvenient. Thank you, my friend. Lord Robillard categorically refused the breakfast that I brought. That has put him in a rotten mood also. And Lady Leomunda is in a state. This is the worst that could happen. I've just thrown the remainder of his meal into the refuse. Impossible to remake it. Deirdre, go to the butchers and get something raw. Demons seem to love blood. Assuming you're talking about the dog, I agree. It's a demon. Now, tell me, what is so special about Lord Robillard's food? Indeed, I don't know. But he doesn't accept anything but. I would pay dearly to know the recipe. I believe that it contains chocolate. Okay. Thank you, my friend. If you will permit me to withdraw, sir. I must prepare Lord Robillard's, that is, Lady Leomunda's dog's meal. Alright, so let's see what we can find in here. We find this. This may prove to be useful. Marinated anchovies. I must know which ingredients to use. What have we here? That thing of interest. Just open the thing. I wonder what scales are gonna take him. Oh, yeah, this is the measuring puzzle. We don't have to do that yet, but uh, we will eventually. All right, so there's a door here and also some stuff here. Ah, this must surely be the recipe for the dog's food. In a pitiful state, the cook must consult it often. There's the stuff for me lord's meal. What else you got here? This chocolate from Romandy. Alright, and uh, what's in here? Or is it going to say closed? Closed. Closed, okay. So let me see here. We do not have it. Well, I think we can begin making the Lord's meal. What's in this? Nothing of interest. What here? Oh, it was just a glitch saying it was just closed. Is this something in the can? Yeah. I'll take that as a no. 
Let's begin. Woodland strawberry jam from Sapporo. Well, yeah, that's what we need. Mustard prepared with vinegar. Let's see. We got that. We got this. Marinated anchovies. And I believe that is all. Alright, so taking this stuff over to the scale puzzle. So let's see here. Something, hang on. Ooh, that's a lot of stuff. What's in here? Oh, aha! To the side, a strange mix can be found that was recently put there. I recognize the color of certain fruits. To figure out the composition of this mixture, I will need a powerful magnification. We can get this. Hmm, there is something here. Phew, what a foul odor. Anything else, Holmes? Hmm, there is something here. Phew, what a foul... Foul odor. Now we know what's in there, and hopefully that's all. Nothing of interest here. Wrong guy knows the control key. Aha! Okay, so it's kind of good now. I think it's kind of good. Whoa, we went overtime. So uh, we'll cook next time. See you guys then.